Well, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, April 19th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in as always. We have a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. Uh, this week, we hosted Ian, co one of the co branding founders for Perium, who gave his insights on some of the new products that they have. And I use them and I like them quite a bit. And I recommend humbly you check them out if you haven't done so already. We had good mate David Mahoney on to share his geopolitical insights on what's going on throughout the world and how that correlates with the new financial changes that we are seeing happening right in front of our eyes. So we always look forward to having him and we'll see him again next month. Upcoming next week, we have the legendary Bill Holter, where we're going to pick up where he left off with X-22's uh, conversation on Resurrection Day about the currency reset and what currencies he specifically sees flourishing tied to precious metals and other back commodities. Uh, good friend Nick Veniamen will be doing a presentation with him on his show on Thursday. Always enjoy that. And of course, the venerable Rod Steele to get his insights next week. Okay, here's, here's the weekly headlines going on. Now, as many of you know, there's talks about the uh, Israeli drone strike attacks on Iran uh, last night on the Ayatollah Khomeini's birthday. Though it was not the secret nuclear power plants and no Iran is denying it to save face, we know that there's a lot of uh, misdirections and mistruths being put out there. But uh, whether they did or did not attack, we believe they did do a micro attack. Um, it's all signaling the inevitability that the secret nuclear power plant attack is coming. We're hoping that it will hold off until Sudani finishes his paperwork, paperwork with Erdogan next week and goes to the World Economic Forum to announce their intent to come back internationally before they do that. But this is all scripted and timed for uh, the perfection of things to happen beyond what we can see. So we will watch to see how that develops. Colombia expresses interest to join BRICS along with Zimbabwe. Cameroon and Pakistan. And on that front, China has just bailed out Zimbabwe, uh, all of their loans to the tune of almost $68 billion. We know that's part of Jasara. We also know that's China's desire to get at Zimbabwe's vast gold reserves and also to help Zimbabwe return to prominence onto the international stage once their elections are concluded later this summer. Again, Sudani wraps up his trip. Uh, with the U.S. today. He met in uh, Michigan and Texas with executives, and he is set to meet with Erdogan Tuesday to complete all the strategic framework paperwork, which includes the HCL and all the other important laws and uh, taxes and tariffs. As of this broadcast, gold is up 23.9410. Brent crude is at 87.22 and silver approaching $28.42 now. Be watching for that because it just came out in a report that once silver hits $30, Litecoin and the Vietnamese dong will soar. And you can see that we're getting very close to the tipping point there. So that's very exciting news. Red Lobster files for bankruptcy. Uh, Outback Steakhouse to close 41 locations nationally. As you know, Elon Musk is laying off employees at Tesla. The housing market continues to slump as mortgage rates hit an all-time high of 7%. Uh, Google lays off more than 74,591 employees and counting to date so far in 2024. Now let's address some of the commentary issues. Uh, a very simple question to address. Somebody asked, can we exchange our Zig notes now? No, <laughs> because they haven't removed the corruption, haven't had the elections yet, as we just mentioned, and Iraq hasn't even gone first. Uh, we don't see that happening for several months. Folks, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to join any, we don't recommend you do, I'm saying you don't need to join any QFS groups or try to game the system or get clever. Just be patient, wait your turn like we have, thank the Lord for this blessing and know that when it comes out, you'll know about it, all everybody on the internet will know and we'll certainly let you know and we'll give you our guidance accordingly as to how we plan to exchange so that you can uh, have the most beneficial success at the time of your exchange. Okay, now uh, a very simple subject on certificates that we discussed. I thought I was clear about that, but I guess there was some confusion. So I just want to clarify that certificates are nice to have. They're not a requirement. Some places give them, some don't. All that it means is that the place that you bought it from is personally backing that as far as they know, it's certified. Are the banks going to require a certificate? No, because some of you can still buy currency from certain banks. Don't nitpick the point. Just know that, you know, JP Morgan, for example, I've heard some locations throughout the country will still sell currency. To my knowledge, most don't, but there are some scant locations. So for those of you who bought it, they typically give you the currency and a receipt because they know where it came from, from the treasury. So they don't need to certify it because they already know its validity. Okay. So the banks are not going to require a certificate when you exchange. What we do recommend is you bring uh, the receipt which shows the origin point and that you bought it from a licensed dealer that is reputable. That's all they're going to care about because they're going to run it through, as I said before, a Deluware machine, which is a French-based watermarking machine that will read the security features on the respective currencies in order to make sure 
that they're not black marketed or that one is illegitimate, which would basically nullify your exchange process and make you unqualified or disqualified to exchange. So just make sure you buy from a reputable dealer and you get a receipt. So, you know, if you get a certificate, great, but it's not a requirement. You don't have to panic about that. They're not going to require that at the bank. I've already checked with wealth managers and private bankers. I've already asked them those questions. And they've assured me that that's not an issue um, and what, they, what they're looking for. So hopefully that alleviates some of your concerns if there are any. Uh, I didn't think there was, but I'm glad that we can just take care of that and nip that in the bud. That uh, does it for today's show. If anything breaking comes out, we'll, you know, we'll bring it to you as soon as we can. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend, and we watch to see how things play out as always. Take care for now.